I didn't realize I had to tattoo I'm Asian on my forehead to prevent people from assuming I'm an angry, insecure American who projects the supposed non-existent colorism onto K-pop and Asian societies in general. Truthfully, I didn't want to make another video about this topic because I didn't want people harping me for making everything about race and skin color. And there's way more topics within K-pop I want to discuss. You see though, the trolls and people who call me an eye roach made me realize something. There's international fans who address colorism in K-pop, then there's Korean fans who say it's blown out of proportion, but no one is really listening to each other. So I thought, why not explore why this is happening? As an international fan, am I reaching when I speak about K-pop's colorism? Or is colorism just downplayed in Asian societies? Or could it be both? Let's find out what's really going on. This video focuses on why colorism is a controversial topic in K-pop. My previous video was about specific examples of K-pop colorism and why it matters. So if that's a video you want to watch, if you want to know more about that, click on that because I won't be discussing it too much here in detail. Colorism, racism, cultural appropriation, and so on are all hot controversial topics in K-pop. Just me saying those keywords is enough for some people to go batshit in the comments and troll me with straw man arguments. Anyway, those topics are controversial for a reason. And what makes things muddier is when opinions are divided within the very community that criticizes idols for the mentioned issues. When it comes to idols sporting black hairstyles, you have people from the black community who say it's insensitive, while others in it believe that you can wear what you want and it doesn't offend them. And then you got people speaking on behalf of them, but that's a whole different conversation. The point is that neither side is inherently wrong, but it certainly makes the argument consistent and that's a reason why the issue gets downplayed. But I think the biggest factor for what makes discussing colorism and related topics so controversial in K-pop is the backgrounds of which different fans come from. Issues that are huge in one country may not exist in the same context in another one, and that creates an insane division between Korean and international fans. In no way do my points represent every single fan for both Korean and international fans. Everyone is an individual with their own opinions and beliefs. My intention is to cover the main points of the perspectives I see from both K-fans and internationals for colorism. When speaking about international fans, I will mainly be referring to Western fans, as that's the demographic K-fans typically refer to when speaking about these topics. So an American person may not understand why idols fall into huge scandals, some so severe it got Tiffany kicked off a show, all because they shared a picture with a Japanese flag on social media. For a Korean person, they're aware of the atrocities that the Japanese rule committed against their own people during the 20th century, like the assimilation and erasure of Korean identity during colonial rule, the Japanese occupation's use of comfort women during World War II, which were mainly Korean women who were duped or forced into sexual slavery for Japanese soldiers. The issue is also exacerbated by the Japanese government's attempt to erase this history and deny that such war crimes happened. So this Rising Sun, and no I don't mean that amazing, iconic, unforgettable, legendary TVXQ song, Rising Sun was primarily used by the Imperial Japanese Army, the same one who exploited Korean women. Think of it like the Confederate flag. You wouldn't hang it up in your room or use the flag emoji, if there is one, because it symbolizes slavery and support for it. That's the reason why the Korean public has an explosive reaction to this. And while you can understand the reaction better when it's compared to the Confederate flag, plenty of people who are just an outsider looking in believe that Koreans should just get over their resentment for Japan in context with their history. So when it comes to colorism, racism, and cultural appropriation, those are topics that have deep ties stemming from decades of overtly racist systems in America. A Korean person may not understand understand how colorism plays into South Korean society, like how an American may see it, because Korea has a very different history from America when it comes to race. In fact, racial issues in Korea historically pertain more to Koreans themselves, being victims of racism because of the Japanese occupation's efforts to erase Korean culture, ban Korean language from schools, and making Koreans adopt 
Japanese names. And going back to comfort women, it was Korean women who were targeted for this exploitation by the Japanese army. Paired that with the fact that Korea is notorious for being a homogenous country, the various socio-political issues within Korea aren't usually tied to race. The demographic of non-Asian people in Korea has certainly increased over the last 10 years, and people of color who aren't Korean have definitely experienced racism there. But when the topic of colorism comes up, for when K-pop idols make fun of other Koreans who are darker skinned, you have two sides that shout different things because neither one really understands why the other side cannot see their perspective. You have Korean people who insist that remarks about dark skin never had to do with race. It stems from hierarchical standards where lighter skin equates to wealth and higher status. For them, it doesn't make sense for a non-Korean people to get mad about an idol teasing another one about their dark skin because one, they're not talking about black people or non-Korean people of color. Two, the darker skinned idol that's being teased is usually a wealthy celebrity. So does it really matter if a person is tanned like a peasant from Joseon Dynasty when they clearly have the same wealth and success as a lighter idol? And then you have international K-pop fans who go berserk at what is often microaggressions pertaining to race and skin color perpetuated by their favorite idols. That could be negative remarks about dark skin, idols wearing black hairstyles, or when idols imitate black people in a stereotypical way. Just to be clear, I'm not denying that there's been textbook racist incidents in K-pop, but it's the microaggressions that have the most controversy, so I'm focusing on those. International fans insist that microaggressions in K-pop matter because one, K-pop profits off of the support of international fans, but not only that, the industry overtly markets their groups for a Western audience in so many ways. Whether Korean fans like it or not, International fans are part of K-pop's target audience. Having a target audience means that a business has to understand what that consumer wants. Two, the foundation of K-pop music is heavily built on Western music and aesthetics. When you're so influenced by a culture that's not your own, then it becomes an expectation that you shouldn't be culturally insensitive to the very thing that's made you successful. A decent amount of Korean fans believe that it's not international fans' place to comment on what's problematic in Korean society. We just don't understand the idol industry and what it stands for, according to them. What I will say about international fans is how whenever these controversies concerning colorism and related issues happen, they tend to criticize idols as though they should have had the same mentality as them with regards to these issues, when that's just not reality. People think that idols like Giselle, who's received an American education, listens to Western music, speaks English, would have understood the implications of mouthing the n-word. I went to what's considered a prestigious university where I've met plenty of Giselles with the exact same background, and I can tell you firsthand that this just isn't the case. An idol knowing English and liking black Black music does not mean they're well-versed in American socio-politics by default. Another thing people need to realize is how idols who grew up in places like Canada, Vancouver specifically, doesn't equate them to having knowledge of black issues just because they grew up in a western country. I know, it seems like common sense that they should. But Vancouver, for example, has a massive Asian population and I've met many Asian people from there who have only befriended other Asians. It's not out of discrimination, it's just more so of a matter of kinship to be in a community of your own people. Now before people can twist my words, let me be clear. None of these factors are an excuse for English-speaking idols when they act racist or culturally insensitive. These points also don't mean that every single English-speaking idol is like this. There's definitely English-speaking idols who have more awareness for these issues. I do believe that idols should be more culturally aware if they want to engage with their international audience, but I think people need to understand exactly who they are talking about when they criticize idols in these controversies. So I certainly agree that it's not fair to criticize criticize a person simply because you expect them to think exactly like you, and so when idols don't understand your perspective or what is wrong about their actions, suddenly they're as bad as people who actually do very legit terrible things. The group Picton received backlash for making a dance that was dedicated to Breonna Taylor. International fans believed it was inconsiderate for them to choose that song given the tragic story of Breonna and the timing of which they created the dance. They actually responded very well to the backlash, issuing a group apology as well as statements from individual members. And one of the members, Se Jun, even talked about it on a live stream, which I think makes a response more compelling, given how apologies usually end after a written statement. Still, there were international fans who were upset that he didn't just 
get why this thing mattered. Picton removed the dance video because it upset international fans, and they also realized who Breonna Taylor was. But because they weren't automatically familiar with the intense racial politics of 2020 America, and they didn't follow up their apology with a virtue signaling post about BLM, some people continued to talk about them like they were terrible people. So in this regard, K fans are right about international fans pushing issues onto K-pop that are specific to Western regions, specifically the states. Even if the K-pop genre is based on Western music influences, especially of Black genres, it's still unfair and unrealistic to expect idols to be well-versed in racial issues that exist outside their country. If you think that consuming Western music means that idols should be knowledgeable about these issues by default, then by that logic, international K-pop fans should be well-versed in the complicated relationship between Korea and Japan that causes K-fans to go batshit when an idol wears a hat with a rising sun flag. Where I think K-fans are wrong, though, is this idea that colorism doesn't exist in K-pop and that Western fans are only making issues about this because it's a problem in the West. People like to say that no one cares about colorism in Korea. If South Korea is known for anything, it's their commitment to mass protests and advocating for socio-political change. It's not often, actually it might be rare if ever, that Korean people march around with signs that preach equality for people regardless of skin tone. But here's a hot take. When people don't speak about a problem, that doesn't make the problem non-existent. What's the definition of colorism? Prejudice or discrimination, especially within a racial or ethnic group, favoring people with lighter skin over those with darker skin. Do I seriously need to explain how this exists in K-pop? More importantly though, if I see an idol make fun of another person for being too tanned, then what makes me out of line for talking about skin color? See, we know that in Korea, colorism is a product of classism above all else. But that doesn't mean a Korean person or anybody is not colorist when they imply that dark skin is unattractive. In fact, someone associating one's skin color with class just makes the whole thing even more colorist because you're literally assuming things about someone's class and character based on their skin tone. I think the biggest difference between colorism in the West and in Asian countries is that in Asian countries, people are taught it's okay and completely normal to speak this way about skin tone. Does that make it right? No. Especially when it's a country that prides itself on globalization. Sure, just because Hyundai is one of the biggest car makers in the world, that doesn't mean the company wants to promote Western ideals and culture for Korea. But you see, K-pop is a cultural product. You'd be delusional to compare that to an automobile. Then again, there are actual people who see idols as objects instead of people. So I guess nothing should be surprising. Regardless, you can't pretend that cultural exchange doesn't exist when the K-pop industry not only brings idols to the West, but they also make K-pop content accessible to their Western audience. So when K-fans tell internationals to leave K-pop and Korean society alone, take your Western ideology back to your own country where it matters, then by that logic, Korean fans should also demand the K-pop industry to stop promoting to us and trying to get every buck they can from internationals. Because when it comes to K-pop and the industry's desire to have its place in the Western music market, how can you possibly expect international fans to sit back and be quiet when idols make colorist remarks? And for God's sake, addressing colorism in Korea doesn't mean it doesn't exist outside of Asian countries. Multiple things can exist at once. It's called complexity. Do I expect that attitudes about skin tone in Korea will change overnight? Absolutely not. Do I believe my videos will start a revolution that triggers anti-colorism campaigns in Korea? Hell no. But none of that means I shouldn't talk about it. I stand by the fact that no one should ever have to feel ashamed for the skin tone they're born with, no matter who they are and where they come from. But I also understand that different cultural values and rich histories don't make the issue as simple as black and white. I wasn't trying to do a pun, I promise. I hope this provides a better understanding of the division between Korean and international fans for these difficult topics. Moreover, I hope it fills in some gaps for important factors of each side that has been overlooked. Thank you so much again, and I will see you in the next one.